Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is a field test of the Sofern SP31V3. I want to thank Sofern for sending me this slide and making the review possible. Sofern markets this as a tack light, and I have to admit, every time you see a tail switch, it seems like the manufacturer throws out the T word. I've seen it described in a number of other places as a tactical EDC light. I'm more inclined to believe that or think that that's a better classification simply because based on the size and weight, I have average size hands, battery, and most particularly the output in terms of peak lumen and peak candela. This impresses me as a bit more of a large EDC style light. Construction seems very good. I appreciate the aggressive knurling. I've had a couple of problems in the past with Sofern lights. Over the long term, the clip coming loose and the charging port cover coming loose. This particular port cover is very thick. It fits in solid, deep. I like how it's horizontally oriented or if you will perpendicular to the axis of the light. So when my fingers are moving underneath the head of the light, there's no tendency to work that loose. I did two preliminary evaluations of about an hour to an hour and a half in duration and I really worked this clip over, and yet it's just as solid as when I first unboxed the product. Now you've probably seen this before, tail cap operation, on, off, momentary side switch controls the output levels. Your output levels are moonlight, low, medium, high, turbo, strobe SOS beacon. When the light is off, you have direct access to moonlight. When the light is on through the side switch, you have direct access to strobe. Once in strobe, you can rotate through the other blinking outputs. There is no direct to turbo from on or off, although you can pre-stage the light in turbo and use the tail cap for either a momentary flash or constant on turbo. However, if you are in low, for example, the only way to get to turbo is a quick triple click because your basic rotation from the side switch is low, medium, high, turbo. All right, that's the very abbreviated overview. You've probably already been to the website. You're familiar with the operation. You're really interested in beam shots. You want to see how this product performs in the field. All right, then let's get out there and get to it. At the bridge where I normally do output level test in low, Let's look out towards the creek, medium, very uh, wide, generous hot spot. High, good 35, 38 yards line of sight. and everyone's favorite, turbo. And there is the extent of the spill or the side to side. First practical exercise of the evening, the close quarters search. Uh, let's say your kids were playing out here earlier. You, kn you knew where they were playing. They drop something, now you have to come search for it. What's the lowest level that I can do an effective search in, say, 8 to 10 yards, relatively close proximity? We're in low right now. 
Now there is an advantage to that wider hot spot that you get from lower candela. This is definitely getting the job done. I might like just a tiny bit more. It's a very bright night tonight. That's going to make it a bit more challenging for the lower candela on the light. We've got a good half moon out, so it'll be a very interesting test environment tonight. So for following a groomed path, it looks like a uh, medium is about as good as you're going to get without overkill. I've got very generous side-to-side -side visibility, and I get right in here. I can see the slope of the path. I can see shadows from those ridges formed by rain wash, areas that I could get into trouble. I could trip easily 20 yards or more down range. So uh, just lock it into a medium and hold it and follow that path till you get back to wherever you're going. This time of the year, I can't see all the way back to the uh, far side of the creek. I'm just gonna have to say 30 to 35 yards line of sight medium this is also a wide open area so we're exposed to the full extent of all the light pollution tonight including the light from the surrounding city let me just work my way around you've probably seen that before the entrance to the outer loop trail the sign not quite 20 from here I'm just going to keep going until I reach the point that I would bail on medium in terms of doing a basic detection. There the path curves off to the right. Continue going. And hang on, there's a bug eating on my finger. Sorry about that. Okay, right about in here, there are two trees right there, the, the, and in that gap, there's another tree right in the middle. That's a bit over 100 yards, so let me go up into high. Yeah, that's definitely where I would want to be from this distance as I go out. The near edge of that tree line is 130 to 150. It angles kind of off to the left. And since I've got some other hikers coming up the path, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down so that I don't flash them. This is high looking through a gap through the trees, a far tree line there, about 120. Um, I, I can see that there's a tree line out there, but I can't really get any uh, detail. So this is definitely not a thrower, but you can see the uh, incredibly wide and generous uh, hot spot there. Let's go take a look at Turbo. And Turbo. That uh, gap between the trees in front of me, if I walk just past that, about 90 to 95 yards, and then there is a tree in the distance, that's uh, over 175. I can definitely see that it's out there. Can't get any detail about it, but uh, I can definitely I identify that there is a tree out there. Using an overhand grip, I can already feel the heat building up in the edge of my hand, even though that's uh, way off the head of the light. Let's just let this uh, go and see what happens.
Well, we've crossed a minute. I can still just barely tell that far tree is out there, but it's getting really hard. Heat has not gotten any worse. Okay, now we've crossed two. This is still looking pretty decent. Definitely feeling the heat. I guess I'm going to let this go to three, maybe four max. Any type of uh, ramp down here is uh, proving to be very gradual. Boy, the heat is really there. Okay, the heat has gone to the point that I'm just about ready to shift my hand. I thought I saw a bit of a ramp down there. Let me go to 3.30. Okay, I changed my mind. I don't quite need to move my hand yet. Um, all right, just slightly re-gripped there. Let's see if we can push this to four. Yeah, the heat is getting a little bit better now. And uh, for me personally, I've lost that light, that, excuse me, that tree in the distance, at least in terms of any type of detail. All right, well, we've gone over four. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down, let the light cool down, and we'll run some more tests. This is high from the top of the observation tower, looking down the trail. Got just a little bit of eye shine down there. Don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there. There is some light behind me, and of course we're completely exposed to the light pollution from the surrounding city. I go up into turbo. And there's another look for you in high turbo. So I'm out enjoying a night hike, and I have my headlamp in a low flood, which is more than suitable for making my way across the concrete pathway and getting some decent side-to-side -side visibility. But I get right in here, let's suppose I catch just a hint of eye shine there or I heard something rustling. Now I could go to my headlamp and transition to spa, but hey, I've already got the sofern in my hand, so it, overhand grip, immediate on. I've got it pre-staged and high, and uh, in fact, there is some eye shine back there. Ah, right there. So uh, we've definitely got some animals out tonight with a half moon. That doesn't surprise me. But you can see this is just a great complement to a typical hiking headlamp. And it may not be the best thrower in the world for uh, its specs, 
but it's definitely got the field of view and um, it's certainly adequate for a large number of EDC and night hiking activities. One more time through the basic output levels, starting in low. Medium. High, and I might be able to eke out 50, 55 yards line of sight. From here, let me move around to the right. Normally I do my wrap-ups here. I do have two more exercises I want to do tonight. This is going to be my last public review for some time as I respond to some significant life changes, the most pressing of which is increased support requirements for my mother who has Alzheimer's and dementia. I'm also beginning a new phase of training with my longtime instructor that will be very physically intense, very time consuming. One up into turbo. And let me go to the uh, other edge right there. All right, last two exercises, let's have some fun. So I'm back up approximately to the area that we started. We've got some uh, dark pockets here, but we also have light in the background. Let's uh, look at low here. Okay, getting a bit weak as we move right in here. Let's go up to medium. Yeah, this is excellent for getting detail back into those dark pockets in the trees. As a fill light in the shadows here. This is something I like to do with an EDC style light because this is a an excellent use case. So I'm back up to the playground area. One thing I want to point out now that I've gone through three evaluations with this light, these switches are really solid. I particularly like the tail cap switch, the texturing, um, the general feel. It has a very good definitive press before it goes into momentary, a very nice definitive click. The side switch is, you can see how it's raised, very easy to operate, even with light gloves. Now, one of the things I always wonder about and I like to test periodically is how fault tolerant is this uh, momentary. So there are occasions uh, in law enforcement and even back when I was in private security where I'd be in a very kinetic environment. It could be a chase. It could be I had to move very quickly, but I don't want to have my light on all the time. I've got light on all around me, but I just want to do intermittent flashes and then I want to have good control over those flashes. I don't want to have momentary and then while I'm moving, I click to full constant on. I want to make sure I constantly have control of that switch. So this is not something that you do practically very often, but what I'm going to do is get my headlamp off and I'm just going to run through this exercise. I'm going to simulate a scenario where I believe there's a suspicious person over here. I need to move fast but I don't want to necessarily flash everything. I want to use the available light around me and we'll see how well this uh, momentary switch behaves. So let's get started. Moving through here. Okay, momentary. Now I'm letting off. 
Okay, look through here. Off. Through here. Okay, nothing but there. Off. Quick, brief flashes. Hey, you over there, let me see your hands, please. Let me see your hands right now. Okay, going into constant one. Yeah, there we go. These switches are very tight. I like doing exercises like that. So, hey, this is the end. But uh, it had to come at some point in time. So I just want to say, if you're evaluating this light, you've seen what it is. Hopefully what it is not, you can compare all that with the uh, price, make your final decision. And for those who have been with me for at least some part of the last three and a half years, it's been a fun ride. Thank you very much, and maybe I'll see you around sometime.